God bless beautiful family and good morning afternoon or evening wherever you're at whenever you're watching this video I pray that you are well know that we are blessed and highly favored why I woke up this morning you woke up this morning because you're watching this video praise the Lord we are soon to be out of here we have an inheritance incorruptible reserved for us in heaven that fadeth not away undefiled hallelujah Guys, we have absolutely no power to corrupt what Jesus Christ did. Man, the Lord really knew that I was going to I was going to be having a conversation with a bunch of legalists yesterday, and I did. Um because he gave me that nugget. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my previous video, um the one where I talk about um the incorruptible inheritance as well as once saved always saved because eternal security is the gospel. Why? Because Jesus Christ paid for our debt on our behalf. He paid for it. He went and offered his blood once and for all for us on our behalf. That means that if he did it for us, our salvation is in his hands. And we have no ability to take that away because it's in his hands. Because it's his work. It's his work that he did that gave us the free gift of salvation because he paid for it with his blood once and for all, past, present, and future sins. We have no ability. Why does my phone keep freaking out with the... Whatever. Uh, it keeps going dark and light. Anyways, we have no ability to corrupt the incorruptible seed that we have been born again into. Why? How are you going to say that we're going to corrupt what Jesus Christ did? We didn't do it. Therefore, we would have no power to change it. We would have no power to taint it or to dirty it. We don't. And also, that power would be in our flesh, which has no power because Jesus Christ, as it says in Romans 8, 1 through 5-ish, Jesus Christ came and condemned sin in his flesh. And now the spirit of life, the spirit of Jesus Christ, of his life is within us that freed us from the law of sin and death. If we are free from the law of sin and death, that's one way that we cannot be corrupted anymore. Positionally, we are perfect in Christ. And two, if Jesus Christ came and condemned sin in the, in the flesh, in his flesh, that means that there is absolutely nothing that the flesh can ever do. Nothing. It's dead. It's laying down. It's dead. It's got nothing going for it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, check out that other video if you want. It really blessed me yesterday. And then I had a bunch of, man, a bunch of legalists coming against me um, on like my Facebook page or uh, whatever. And just constantly, me and praise the Lord, the Lord sent another brother, another grace believer in with me after about 40 ish comments. <laughs> Uh, the Lord sent in another brother to help me out um, because I was just like I was with my wife and I wasn't going to go back and forth and start getting irritated with the stuff. I'm going to post my scripture. If they're going to read it, they're going to read it. But this other brother came in and started posting a bunch of videos from um, uh, from other grace believers um, refuting the scriptures that they were trying to use to say, wait, no, but look, I've got to do something now. And what is that? It's like, what does that do, though? You're then saying, oh, I trust in the blood of Jesus, but now I've got to do stuff. You literally just said you don't trust in the blood of Jesus then. If you say, ah, we, I am saved by grace. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Now I'm going to go do my part. You are quite literally saying, I do not trust in Jesus Christ. I do not believe the blood is enough. I have to go do my own stuff. Thus, you are putting salvation in your hands, saying that you can do it, you can earn it, and you can lose it. Where's the rest in that? Also, why are you making yourself a co-savior? Why are you constantly pointing to yourself of being good and look at all the things that I obeyed. Look at the commandments I obeyed. Look how good I am. I'm really saved. No, we're not saved by our works, nor are we kept saved by our works. And our works are not, let me repeat that, our works are not proof that we are saved. The proof that we are saved, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is the profession of our faith. If you believe that Jesus Christ 
Hallelujah, our Lord and Savior, if you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead, you are saved. You are a child of God, and there is nothing else that needs to be done. Every day, have faith. Just choose to have faith, and you will see the Lord work in your life. Just choose to believe. No matter what the enemy says, no matter what your conscience is trying to tell you, oh, you're not doing enough, you've got to do, go do more things, just silence it with the truth and have faith. Believe that Jesus Christ did it all. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. That's the, that's, that is the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. John 3, 16, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, Romans 10, 9, Romans 10, 9 and 10, Romans 10, 13, uh, Romans 5, 1, uh, Galatians 3, 26, um, man, so, so many others. Uh, there's uh, there's more in uh, in Peter as well. Just saved by grace through faith, we have been sprinkled with His blood to an inheritance incorruptible. Okay, to an inheritance inscr inheritance incorruptible. All right, we're gonna. I'm sorry. I I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. The Word of God, Jesus, the Gospel. It's so good. It's so powerful. It's so freeing. John 8:36. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Okay, that was a six minute tangent. We're going to hop into Thessalonians chapter 5. It's relatively short. I mean, it's 28 verses, but there's a lot of one-liners. So it's relatively short. These are admonitions, okay? So let's go back a little bit in chapter 4 because we love to hear these verses, all right? And we'll read that to get a little context of now what he's talking about, okay? So he's comforting um, the he's comforting people in the church of, of Thessalonica, um, saying they do have a hope. You haven't missed the rapture. It's okay. Those who are asleep will be caught up as well. Don't worry. You will see them again. Okay, so here we go. We'll start with 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain be, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen, brothers and sisters. I love that. We are soon to see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our brother, our friend. He calls us brothers and friends, guys. That's amazing. That's how much he loves us. And that's how, that's how wonderfully he looks at us. He calls us his brother. He calls us his friend. Chapter 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But brethren are, but, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, 
Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. All right. That's great. All right, guys. We have, we have some really good stuff to be hopeful for, right? We have... Sometimes it's hard to turn the pages in the Bible one at a time. They all stick together. We have a magnificent hope. We can praise, we can rejoice, we can pray for one another. Guys, let's comfort one another with these words. Soon and very soon we will be caught up in the clouds and we shall see the Lord face to face and we will be with him forever. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless brothers and sisters. God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. Enjoy the rest of your day and maybe I'll talk to you later. Maybe I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.